Peace, family, and we should now be live on this Saturday night. Woo! Excited. Y'all in for a good one tonight. My green screen is acting up, family, so this is why it looks like it looks like I'm in the ethers because my green screen <laughs> is a little messed up, so it looks like I'm actually in the fifth element right now. But um, listen, we're going to have a great show. Y'all can see who's here. I'm going to bring on my guests, my beloved guests, in a second. I want y'all to get comfortable first, hit the like button, share the video with your friends and family. It's Saturday night. We're going to have a good time, family. And it's 11-11. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to touch on that as well. Uh, with that being said, where's my commercial at? Let's get to a quick commercial. We finally got the announcement for the album with me and Cam is coming 12-16. Quick commercial, family, and be right back. further ado ladies and gentlemen want to welcome back to the platform sister myra welcome back <laughs> welcome back sister myra wonderful wonderful always oh. wonderful always lovely to be here you know and be able to um correspond with our family you know i, I didn't i didn't plan it i didn't purposely plan for you to be here at 11 11 it just happened that way yeah, it happened that way last year too. Yeah, it, 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 in my mind, I wasn't like eleven, eleven. Let, let me get. My, eh, I swear, Myrie, just happened that way. No, that so, means, that must mean something yeah. other than physical. That means that was spiritual. You know? Indeed, indeed. Uh, so I, I guess so, Sister Myra. Uh, like I said, thanks for participating sure. in the sacred prayers. Uh, coming on the show a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, to start out, well, start out with this show. Um, before we get into the fifth element, very important conversation tonight. We got to talk about this 11 11 new moon portal that yeah. all everybody's talking about on Instagram and YouTube. Me and you talked about 11 11 before. What should we be doing tonight, Sister Myra, or around this time with this 11 11 new moon portal? Well, that's exactly what I'm here to tell you, you know, okay. what we need to be doing. Not only what um, um, should we be doing, but what we need to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in a very strategic time. Uh, right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we're at a time where it's time uh, to fulfill a universal purpose. And 11-11, um, this is very appropriate. I, I've been telling you, you, you know, your family that <clears throat> we're in the last cycle of energy. Um, and that's what it takes to uh, evolve uh, is as we complete spirals or cycles, um, <clears throat> 180 degrees on each half. Uh, balanced by the opposite in order to complete a full 360 spiral, open up a vortex and access the next level of spiritual energy. Uh, so this 1111 is definitely playing a strategic part in that. Um, in this last cycle, everything is going to be enhanced. Everything that uh, has been coming together um, through this whole age is now ready to culminate and be fulfilled. And this last cycle is going to show us uh, the benefits of everything that's been coming together uh, all this time. So 11 and number the number 11 is a master number. So is the number 22. Mm -hmm. 11 represents physical mastery or personal mastery, how you're mastering personally. Uh, and then when we get the double 11, 11, it's now time for us to personally master when it comes to 
us as spiritual masters. So us personally mastering um, as the spiritual uh, and physical um, uh, balance between uh, bringing the two together in full spiritual mastery. Because anytime we add up the 11 and the 11, we get the 22. And the 22 is talking about a spiritual mastery. So we're bringing together um, our own individual personal mastery, and we're stepping up as the personal masters when it comes to what time it is, uh, opening up the number 22 or opening up to our spiritual mastery. So all this is in divine order. All this is right on time. In this last cycle, it is now time for us to step up. We have a responsibility to step up um, and participate in the things that are uh, unfolding at this time. Uh, and you all know me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bigger picture person. So we're looking at, you know, not just now at this time, a um, global agenda. Um, we're now looking at uh, a planetary agenda uh, being fulfilled because everything is about levels multitude of levels. And now is the time uh, for us to step up to the highest level in the planetary scheme um, of this whole reality that is unfolding, uh, opening up our evolution uh, into a new age of spiritual empowerment. Um, that is what this whole uh, <clears throat> operation has been about, formulation <clears throat> of our spiritual mastery mm -hmm. um, connected to our personal uh, path, our personal uh, purposes mm -hmm. and our personal, um, uh, the things that um, we chose uh, to personally contribute to a larger universal purpose being fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And each of us has been on a personal mastery through many, many lifetimes. Mm -hmm. This is the lifetime where it's all going to come to a culmination and come to a head. This is where now it's not enough just to walk the walk, to talk to talk, it's time to walk the walk. Um, it's not enough just to know anymore. Now it's time to walk in that knowing. Everything that we've been prepped for, it's now time to step up and demonstrate that we have each individually personally mastered in what we need to know about what our purpose is in this larger scheme, this larger universal scheme of things. Uh, I asked the spirit, I asked the universe, they helped me with this message tonight Excellent. because it is extremely important and it's extremely strategic. And it, yes, it is definitely connected to the 1111 <clears throat> because um, we want to now look at both sides. We're talking about individual spiritual mastery uh, personally, as well as our own physical personal mastery. That's the two 11s we're looking at as they come together in the 22 uh, for a spiritual mastery. And the spirit means collective. That means that each one of us contributes our personal mastery, how it comes together for a spiritual mastery in the purpose that we've been prepped to do and step up to through many, many lifetimes. And now we're at a culmination and a fulfillment um, as it's time for this energy to peak uh, and all come together. Um, so there's a few things now. Here's, um, there's some things that I dug up uh, from the past Excellent. that um, is in line with what we're talking about here. Uh, and first, we're going to focus on this uh, personal mastery. This is a piece called, um, it's called, um, um, let's see, lost the title of that. Uh, but um, this is a piece I got off the internet. And some of you that have been following me um, have may have heard this before because I'm I'm digging up old material. Spirit is spiral, so 
I'm going to come back full circle. It's time to come full circle. Uh, it's not real until it's whole, holistic, and that means a full 360 degree spiral. What goes around comes around 180 degrees on each half. This is actually the formula of creation because if it's not whole, it's not real. And two halves make a whole. And we're now at the epitome of bringing together uh, two halves to make a whole, which is also a demonstration of those 11 11s coming together for that 22 as we step up in our personal mastery, coming together collectively for a spiritual mastery of what is now time for us to step up and to do and to accomplish. So I'm going to start with personally recognizing who we are and the power we have from within. Our power is internal. You, you guys know my most famous phrase, spirit moves inside out, not outside in. That means we're energy transmitters as well as receivers. And it's what we send out as to what we spiral back. If we're sending it out at 20%, we're going to spiral it back at 20%. If we're sending it out at 80%, we're going to uh, uh, receive it back at 80%. We're transmitters as well as receivers. But we are the ones who determine what we receive back according to what we're sending out. So we're going to start with this personal message um, that, um, like I said, some of you have may have heard me before. Uh, the information I'm giving is layered. It's layered, layered, and layered. So that is why you'll hear a lot of reiteration, uh, me repeating a lot of things, because you, it really won't make a lot of sense until it falls in place, you know, when it's time for uh, it to be recognized. So I'm going to read this first. And like I said, some of you may um, recognize this. It says here, um, understand that as an infant, you came into this world full of spirit, wonder, and natural power. <clears throat> Excuse me. If not for outer influences, you would have grown into a strong and powerful being. Anything you wanted could be yours. Anything you wanted to do, you could do. Just imagine limitless freedom. It's a birthright you know. But unfortunately, because those who shaped our early minds were themselves limited by limiting beliefs, they consciously and unconsciously passed them on to us. Now, this is the first truth. It is most important. Belief makes things real. It makes reality. Belief is made from thought. There is nothing real that was not first born of thought. You limit yourself only by the beliefs that you accept is true. This applies to everything. If you don't think you can have something or do something, sure enough, you can't. And um, this is a, a Native Amer or an Indian who is giving a lesson to a younger uh, Indian youth. It says here, his name is Rufus. Rufus reached down for a twig and he drew two long parallel lines in the sand. This is a river, he said, pointing, and through the mind of each person flows a river of energy and light. This light is a creative force and the light is always being shaped by the thoughts and the beliefs of that mind. The river always flows. So man is always creating, always. If his beliefs are limited, then so are his thoughts. And he keeps creating more of the same limited stuff. Everything, everything that happens to you, you ex uh, everything you experience is what you made all by yourself. No exceptions. Nobody has more power to create your reality than you do. You just have to know that. And now you got to walk in that knowing. It says, uh, society seems to teach to the contrary, that you are almost powerless to control your life, that except for hard work and constant struggle, you have little hope for overcoming the tide of misfortune that besets most men. This is only a belief 
And because it is accepted as truth by the majority, it is experienced as reality. The simple truth is the opposite, however. You have complete control of your life and you have the free will to decide what to believe. And once you decide to think for yourself, to believe what you like, the magic of the universe fills your every choice. And when we're talking magic, now we're getting into uh, that fifth element, the ether. That is the magical component of those four elements. It says here, do you know that most people give away their power? So many just give away their first power, the power of choice to others, to their friends, to their family, to their heroes, to their gods. They let these others choose what is best for them while, without consulting their second power, their own feelings. What you feel comes from the soul, the inner being, and it always knows which choice provides the best outcome. <clears throat> uh, it, is, it is okay to take advice, um, just understand it is okay to take from advice from others, um, but understand that influence from other people take away your personal power and it must be reclaimed by thinking for yourself and by believing what you feel. To take advice is fine, but only if it feels right by you. So that is your first, um, what you check first off is what you feel. You know, I talk about the royal family and their contribution each a member of that royal family has a contribution to who we are in our energy vibration. And when it comes to uh, the external, we're dealing with the air element and the fire element. The air element represents the father component, father spirit, righteous father spirit, who think who speaks to you external through the mind or how you think. And that is how we create in the spiritual realm through how we think. If we're thinking pessimistic, we're going to energize pessimistic. If we're thinking optimistic, we're going to energize optimistic. If you believe they can get you, yes, then you've opened the door for them to get you. If you know they can't touch you, they can't touch you. This is Aquarius age, the sign of I know, the energy of I know, and its opposite sign is Leo the creative ruler. I know I am a creative ruler in order to activate that rulership. You have to know your power in order to activate your power. If you don't know it, if you, you don't have it. If you believe someone else has more power than you do to create your own reality, then you've actually handed that to them. If you know they can't touch you, they can't touch you. Y'all know my famous phrase, hammer time. You can't touch this because I know the source of my power. And that is the security and the confidence it's time for us to step up into when it comes to knowing the source of our power, which is internal. Spirit moves inside out, not outside in. We, and and uh, anything outside of you is only an illusion, but it's not real until it's whole holistic, which means a full spiral, 180 degrees on each half. Stepping up and being prepped to know your spirit is your partner and it's time to partner with your own spirit. You can't do it on your own. Your spirit is trying to teach you the reality that you created when you walked on your own in the physical versus the reality you're about to step up to in a royal purpose. When you begin to walk in partnership with your spirit, you have to become holistic. That means you do the physical half and you have your spirit do the spiritual half and together you have that full spiral, that full 360 degree spiral, which opens up a vortex. And that is an infinite process. You only complete spirals for access to the next level where you start a new one at a higher vibration only for access to the next level and the next level. And it's your spirit that's going to teach you and position you and guide you in how you're stepping up. We can no longer be Lot's wife. We can't be looking back at the habits and the issues of the past 
and hanging on to those things, your fears, your doubts, your guilt. Those are the things that expose those issues of the past that we're holding on to, that's keeping us grounded in this physical illusion. And it's time for you to partner with your spirit who knows how to look around corners you can't, who has a broader view. And now it's going to show you and prove to you and validate to you that your power is connected to you being in a partnership with your own spirit. But you both can't go into the ring at the same time. <clears throat> Two opposites cannot occupy the same space at the same time. That means you have to do all you know to do on the physical half. And when you've maxed out on that, that is when you tag your partner. You come out of the ring, allow your spirit to go in the ring, and it will access the energy from the universe that will match what you have contribute on the physical half. And that is when it will fulfill and complete your purpose. So this is the process that's being unfilled, unfolding, and this is what we have to now uh, step up to, a partnership and a relationship first with our own spirit. That's the first spiral you have to complete and all the other spirals will stem from there. This is what I read the first piece about, for us to change our mindset, where we've been programmed in this illusion, in false values. They have put a blockage between us moving our spirit out from our soul realm, our subconscious, our ancient memory, our connection to our ancestral powers. But we're now moving our spirit out from emotional doubts, fears, and guilt. And that is why we're, we're in the dilemma that we're in, but it's now time uh, to step up and get in partnership with your spirit and let it be the one to position you so that you're not looking back, holding on to old habits, old values of the past that can no longer serve you as you're stepping up to a royal purpose. These things will become mundane. You will understand when you become um disillusion with the things of this reality when nothing is no longer satisfactory or no longer appeasing uh your feelings anymore because we are now it's time for us to step up from a mundane physical illusion of power to a spiritual creative and royal empowerment so this is where that fifth element comes in at which is actually the magical component, which we are talking about the ethers. When I was, um, um, you all know I was a student of Bobby Hammett and um, um, he would allow me to uh, dispense my um, um, newsletters, you know, at his, um, his lectures. Uh -huh. So this is a part of um, an article that was in one of the newsletters. It's called An Altered um, Consciousness. Uh, altered Consciousness. And it says here, magic mm. is art and practice of using energy to influence and alter events on the physical plane. The physical plane is rigid and solid and not easily influenced but it is interconnected to other planes that are more flexible and malleable. <clears throat> By changing the energy on those levels, you can change their reflections in this one. Just as you are connected and anchored in this universe by your physical body, you are connected to these other planes with your mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies. Each has an existence and an awareness unique to it on each of the corresponding planes. Your connection to these other levels of awareness is seen on this plane as the energy shells around your physical body called the aura or etheric bodies. By working with the energy in these energy bodies, you manipulate the energies on other planes that connect to them. This influences the way these other planes uh, energies manifest, and as a result, changes how these energy uh, manifest on this plane. Uh, the name for this principle is the law of correspondence. This is the way all sympathetic magic works, and it is a very powerful principle because this is a physical universe. 
Nothing can participate in it without a physical vehicle or a mechanism that obeys the laws of the universe. Nothing can happen or be experienced without having a physical process involved. This is where the change begins. This is the point of connection and the way you will bring the reality through. The five elements are one of the most important concepts in magic. It could be said that everything in creation is composed of one or more of these elements in combination. The five elements are symbolic of many of the most basic concepts of our reality. They represent times of life, the levels of awareness, seasons, the winds, and the compass points. They also are representative of the states of uh, the states of stages through which pure spiritual energy passes. It manifests in this universe and corresponds to the four planes of existence, which makes up this particular universe. So when we're talking about the ether, mm -hmm. we're talking about the binding factor mm -hmm. of the other four elements, mm -hmm. the air and fire the masculine and 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 you guys i know i repeat a lot but it's just so layered it has to sink in the external the masculine there's four members of a royal universal family of energy at its highest of vibration spiritual energy is collective physical is individual we are the individual physical vessels that have access through our melanin. That is the greatest component of this ether, the melanin, which gives us the ability to harmonize energy. You don't blend energy. Like I said, two opposites can occupy the same space at the same time. This is what a lot of people don't understand about energy unfolding through a negative and positive polarity. You have to complete one half before the opposite half can respond in equal measure. You don't blend energy. And we have now been in this alchemy process of completing the physical half of this process. Physical half had to be completed before we can get the response from the spiritual half that will balance it out and complete that 360 spiral, 180 degrees on each half. So we are now completing the physical half of this operation. We're on the verge of when I say this is the last cycle, <clears throat> that is what I'm talking about. So that is the uh, air and fire. That's the masculine half. First, let me tell you, everything did start matriarchal. Mm -hmm. All colors come from the color black. We're talking black mama universe. Why our ancestors came out as the original rulers. They had powers. They could fly. They could breathe underwater. They could talk telepathically with the plants, the animals, the universe, each other. We still have those powers. However, that's the subconscious, mama's domain, the antiquity, the ancient, the ancestral. When we're dealing with father's half or the masculine half, the air and the fire, the air element represents the conscious mind. We've been in the conscious mind. That's the conscious half of reality. In order to access those powers of our ancestors, we now have to jump the fence to mama's half of the operation, not straddle the fence. We don't blend energy. We have to hop the fence. We have to complete mm. one half mm -hmm. before the opposite half can be activated. So when we're dealing with the masculine, it started matriarchal, where we had those powers, our ancestors, the original rulers had these powers, these magical powers, ancestral powers and how we're connected through our own family, ancestral lineage, dictates those powers, how they have been generationally passed down through us to come now back to full circle. Mm -hmm. So 
of the air and the fire, it started matriarchal, antiquity, ancestry. Mama tells us where we came from. Mm -hmm. Father tells us where we're headed. Mm -hmm. He's spiritual. He mm -hmm. tells us how to move forward and fulfill our spiritual powers and destiny. Mama tells us where we access those powers from antiquity and ancestry. Mm -hmm. I keep telling people the word royalty means who has the most ancient lineage of power. Those who can access antiquity, their ancestry, mama's domain. So spirit is spiral. So we started Major Oracle. The, the earth and the water element. But then it spiraled around to the patriarchal half, from the matriarchal half, where it became external, which is the air and fire. Now, I want you to understand, you have a full spiral within you. And whenever I'm saying masculine, I'm only talking external. And when I'm saying feminine, I'm only talking internal, not male and female. So don't think that we're talking one up or one down. You have a full spiral within you. So when it spiraled external uh, to the patriarchal half from the matriarchal half, these are just cycles of energy, you guys. And it's an alchemical process, turning what is base into gold, refining, turning mortals into immortals. It's all about the spiral of energy. And so where you came from, your antiquity, your ancestry, the ancient lineage, uh, which is uh, what that melanin component is about, which puts us at the top of the hierarchy when it comes to spiritual powers, because of the melanin giving us the ability not only to draw energy, but giving us the ability to harmonize energy, okay, it acts as the oil. So when it spiraled around to the patriarchal half, the air and fire, we're dealing now with the father when we deal with the air element, father spirit. It said mama tells us where we came from, father tells us how to move forward and fulfill our spiritual purpose and destiny. He talks to us external through the mind or how we think. That is what the air element is about. But his highest, his highest goal is to create a collective righteous mindset. That is the father's ultimate goal, a collective righteous mindset. Whenever we're dealing with the spirit, we're dealing with the collective. Physical is individual. That is why they say, when more than one is called in my name, so shall I be father spirit. You have to pull energy to create spirit. You have to pull energy to create spirit. So anytime we're talking collective, we're talking spiritual. Anytime we're talking individual, we're talking physical. So father spirit, the air element, the, 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 the father, the, the spiritual father of righteous thinking, thinking righteously. That is his ultimate role and ultimate goal. He is the one who disciplines us through how we think. He is the one that challenges us, restricts us, limits us, just to see if we're going to overcome those limitations and restrictions by staying true to our integrity and our character. Because he's trying to create righteous thinking. <clears throat> we're dealing with many levels here. And when we're looking at the planetary level of the father, we're dealing with Saturn energy, the Lord of Karma. And that is the one who chastises and restricts everyone just to see if they're going to overcome those restrictions, learn his lessons of righteous thinking. Um, because he is the planetary ruler of Capricorn and Capricorn is the sign of integrity and character. So that is what he's righteously trying to bring you to is you being a vessel of highest integrity and character. Because it's the only way you're going to make a connection to uh, Mama Universe. You have to be at your highest in integrity and character. And Father Spirit is the one who teaches you those lessons uh, through how you think. 
And then also external and masculine is the sun or the fire element, the fire element. That is the sun component, S-O-N at the uh, individual level and S-U-N at the planetary level. We're dealing with a multitude of levels, you guys, all the way from the physical all the way up to a star system level is the, the, the levels that we have access to in this ascension and completing spirals, completing a spiral, elevating to the next level, completing another spiral, elevating to the next level, completing another spiral. That's how it works, okay? So all the way up to a star system level is what we have access to in these um, ascension, in these spirals. Uh, completing the whole. Uh, so the fire component, the sun, at the planetary level, we're looking at the S-U-N. The sun, the fire, deals with our passions. It deals with our desires. But the highest vibration of the sun or the fire is creative powers. Creative powers. That's when we're dealing with the fire. <clears throat> the sun. So how we're thinking righteously and how to use our creative powers through our passions and our desires. This is the masculine half. This is the half we've only now are completing. As a matter of fact, the 1111 is a portal. It's a gateway. And this is the final cycle. So this is the portal or the gateway where we're now able to go through those gateways and step to the other half of this operation, completing the half of the masculine, where we've learned lessons through righteous father's spirit. This is the story of a sar. I've told you guys where father uh, in the ancient times known as Set had to cut a sar down into those 14 pieces, which is the 14 cycles of time. Set uh, is the father of righteous thinking. And a sar is the son of ultimate power. We're talking about the last fire sign, Sagittarius, the son of abundance power, because the planetary ruler of Sagittarius is Jupiter. And whatever Jupiter touches, it brings in abundance. Uh, it enlarges. So the father of righteous thinking said had to cut the ultimate sun down into these 14 cycles of time. Because the biggest part of this program with me to you tonight is identifying the ultimate sin. There's only one sin. And this is what is the biggest issue that is going on in the world today. And that biggest sin spiritually, which is opposite the physical, where there's a multitude of sins, is one sin spiritually, and that's the abuse of power. I don't care how much power you're given. That is how you're being judged by the universe. How are you going to use that power? Are you going to use it righteously or are you going to use it abusively? That is how we're being judged by the universe as to who qualifies to step up as a new ruler for this new Aquarian age. I'm a holistic person. I don't talk about one sign without its opposite because that's the only way you're going to see the whole. And all this is being activated because we've gone into the Aquarius age, which is in 2013. We went into the Aquarius age. And so um, Aquarius is the sign of I know. It's the sign of the humanitarian. And it's the sign of evolution. Uh, revolution. So um, Aquarius's opposite sign is Leo. So balancing. Leo is the creative rulers. Creative rulership. So balancing. Aquarius with Leo 
I know I am a creative ruler in order to activate that rulership, in order to evolve. Our ancient rulers, our ancestors are trying to pass us the baton as the new age rulers to evolve out of an abuse of power to a humanitarian empowerment. That is the bigger aim of this whole operation here that is being fulfilled and culminating at this time. So that fire, that... um. That is what Asar uh, was giving the lesson by righteous father's spirit to learn because he was the son that was most prone to abuse his power with Jupiter as the planetary ruler and Jupiter bringing in abundance. And Jupiter is the great beneficent and anything it touches, it expands. So righteous father's spirit had to dissect and time we're dealing with air the mind dissect, you know, the ultimate sun down into these 14 cycles of time in order to mature and how to use that power righteously without abusing it. There's a royal purpose being served. You're not going to be able to go to a higher level abusing your power. That is the main agenda of the universe to prevent abuse of power and a universal level. When our predecessors abused their powers, they screwed up the world. If we abuse our powers, it's going to be detrimental to the universe. That is what this whole process has been about, to teach us how to use our powers righteously without abusing them. That is the story of Asar and Set, the father, cutting the ultimate son of power down into 14 cycles to learn how to use that power righteously. The last part, the last piece he couldn't find was the penis, which represents his resurrection, his resurrection into his full empowerment collectively. Uh, once he's demonstrated that he learned, he's, he knows how to use that power righteously. So that is the air and the fire the father and the son half of the operation. And we are now in this portal of 1111 to cross and complete that half, the conscious realm, the conscious mind, you see. Now it's time for us to pass through to the other side and now begin to come back full circle to the mama or the feminine half the earth and the, the water and the earth element, you see. So once this, that's what this portal, this 1111, that's what this gateway is opening up for us to complete the conscious half of this operation. But we're just gonna put a pin in it, you guys. We're just gonna put a pin in what you think. Now it's time to hop the fence to mama's half, the water element, the water component. When we're talking feminine, water and earth, those are internal, internal. So mama, where father speaks to you external through the mind or how you think, mama speaks to you internal through the water or how you feel. But mama, the water is the ancient of ancients, remember? She is the mama of antiquity, the mama of ancestry. She is the one who will open up the subconscious, the subconscious, the interest into our ancient memory, our Akashic records. That is mama's domain of operation. So now we have to put a pin in what we know until we can balance equally, again, coming back full circle, to the feminine half. So now it's time to go internal into how you feel, trusting what you feel. Like I just read to you when it came to uh, trusting our first, our feelings, the internal, because that's how mama speaks to you internal through how you feel from your ancient memory. She reconnects you to your ancestors, your ancestry, especially your family ancestry, your family lineage. Each one of us have a family, it's a family purpose being fulfilled. 
So um, the water element, um, her job is to her ancient universal melanated family. That is mama's um, forte or focus or ultimate goal is um, her ancient universal melanated family. And she is the one that is very ferocious, very, very vicious when it comes to protecting that family. You know, um, we can see the demonstration of that, you know, as we're in that second tier of the water element or mama's domain, the Scorpio energy, which is all about intensity, where things intensify, where things go deep, where things go to the extreme. That is that water, that emotional chaos of Big Mama. You know, I've told people that she's been on a scared straight program. That's just another way of defining, you know, the cycles and how we have to balance those cycles. She's been stepped back and allowing father to do his half, teaching us the lessons of righteous thinking. And when we learn uh, the lessons of father's half, that is when we are now able to enter into mama's half, where father is the one who chastises you. Um, you know, in other words, he creates those boo-boos, you know, the lessons that we're learning and how we're learning those lessons. Um, it's mama. When we've learned the lessons of father, he can now pass us over to mama, who is the one who will kiss those boo-boos and make them magically okay. We're talking mama magic. First two letters of magic is ma, where father deals with logic and reason and knowing through the air element. Mama deals with the water. It goes beyond your knowing, your logic and reason, your understanding. It, now we're going into uh, the soul realm. We're going into uh, the water where it goes. Um, that's the subconscious because the last water sign is Pisces, the sign of the subconscious, the interest into your ancient and Akashic records. So now we're going into the water or the magical that goes beyond your knowing, your contemplation. That's why this happens in the Aquarian age. Aquarius is the sign of I know. That means we've reached the maximum of what we need to know. We know everything we need to know right now. Your spirit has brought you everything you need to know at this point. Now it's time to utilize what you know. It's time to walk in that knowing. It's a difference in knowing and walking. Father brings information to the table but it takes mama to serve it up. They work together in that way. So going into the subconscious, what's hidden, internal, in our antiquity, our Akashic records, our ancient memory, reconnecting us with our ancestors and our ancestors' powers, the powers they had, we can now access those powers. But you gotta know that and you got to be able to walk in that knowing. Once you've been ordained, it's time to act like you know it. You have to walk in the authority of that royalty because you're not going to get the response unless you're doing it with the authority that's been ordained to you in this larger universal purpose that is now ready to be fulfilled. So, that is what the mama brings to the table, the family, the family and her love for her family, the water element. Let me tell you, there is no power greater than the power of love. <clears throat> that is why this is a family endeavor being completed because it's now time for mama to bring back, come back and shower the love. This is what the energy of mama means. I will take care of my family needs beyond their capability. That is what mama means in energy, in her vibration. Just like when we had a physical mama who took care of our physical needs as babies. 
They didn't have to lay up in the crib and figure out how to eat or change diapers. We had a mama who need, knew what we needed even before we knew what we had a need for. And as babies that had to appear magical. Well, now we're babies stepping up to our cosmic mama. And she's going to take care of our needs as well beyond our capability. When the powers that have been has become so corrupted and stagnated in their power, it has now reached a global level, a global level of, of um, abuse of power. So it's gotten too big for us individually. That is why it's time to step into mama's half because that is the mama's role to take care of the needs. She is mama universe. And they have become corrupted at a global level. There's a global agenda of corruption and every single system in this conscious realm has become corrupted. So don't even buy into the okie doke. There's only one line being drawn here now, righteousness and wickedness, one line. So now is the time to step into and prove that you're worthy because you're thinking righteously and now you want to use the powers um, as Big Mama is going to use the power to show the love for those who have been most denied their value, most denied who they are. We had to go from the opposite. That is the formula of creation, you guys. Opposites. Two halves make a whole. So everything we've been programmed in this illusion to believe is real mentally about who you are is actually opposite of who you really are when you step into mama's domain or a universal domain or perspective of who you are when it comes to your energy vibration and the levels you have access to in that energy vibration. So now it's about the love, the unconditional love, which a lot of people want to argue about. Um, but I'm not talking the illusionary definition of unconditional love. I'm talking about a nod judgmental, looking down your nose at those that are the outcast of society. That is why Pisces, the ultimate water sign, is the sign of the outcast of society, the hospitals, the prisons, uh, the outcast of society. We have to embrace everyone in value of their worth. So um, the love, the unconditional love, that's what I mean. Unconditional loving those that you think uh, you can look you down your nose at because you've been programmed in false values in this physical illusion of reality. So that is mama's domain to give us the compassion and the love. And she is also the melanin component. We get the melanin through the mama. Sorry, you know, it's the mama who imparts the melanin. A fertile mama, a fruitful mama. I always say uh, the Muslims have a saying, a nation can rise no higher than its woman. I keep telling everyone that is incorrect. The true phrase is a nation can rise no higher than its mama. A, fer a fertile mama creates a fruitful nation. An infertile mama creates the abomination that maketh desolate. That means to depopulate the land. So it's all about the mama and the love, the love that can conquers hate. Only love can conquer that hate that is now reached its maximum in this conscious realm where man wants to decide and believe what he's been programmed and manipulated to believe to serve a purpose or an agenda of a global power that has reached its maximum of corruption. And I'm talking every system of this world, political system, 
the educational system, the medical system, the pharmaceutical system, the, the news media, um, every system you can think of now has reached its maximum of corruption. That is why we have to end the conscious half of this and go into the subconscious, the water, where we now can reach into the love and the feelings and the compassion, you know? Um, so that is the mama's role to teach us to love, number one, ourselves, going internal. That is how mama speaks to us from within. You have to go internal for mama to expose to you who you are in connection to a universal purpose. That's another one of the things Bobby Hammond gave to us that really astounded me when he said it. He said, the universe is only, the, the universe that we look up at is only a reflection of who we are from the internal. And when enough of us comes together collectively and how we feel, that is how we put planets in the universe. That is how we manifest those planets. We've come to a common collective internal. Mm. Talk to Myra. Level of what we feel mm -hmm. in the love, mama love, unconditional, not restricted to what we think. The mind is the great restrictor. It defines things. It puts a definition where we have unlimited access to energy that goes beyond the mind or the conscious mind. So this is why I have a problem every time I make a presentation and then I look at the comments and they're nitpicking details. That means you're not ready to cross over. You're still debating details, conscious details. Well, I think it should be this, or I think it should be that. You know, the last time I did the show on 11-11, I talked about the three uh, Ks. Ks, right. The 11 is the, uh, the number, the, the letter K is the 11th letter of the alphabet. And that's when I brought up uh, Kendrick, I brought up um, Ky yeah, uh, Kyrie and Kanye. And when I looked at the comments after that, everybody was debating who the K should be. Well, I think it should be Kaepernick. I think it should be this person. This It should be that K. This is not up to debate, you guys. I'm not giving you anything from my own mind or understanding or anything I've figured out. I'm trying to give you information that has been imparted to me to give to you. You can receive it. You don't have to. I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. But if you don't take the message as it's given and present it, then you're you're not getting the true picture. I mean, have you ever tried to put a piece of a puzzle together and you can put whatever piece you think you want to put in that place? That picture is not going to come together. This goes over your head. It goes beyond your conscious mind. So you're not debating me. I'm not the one telling you this from what I know. I'm imparting it to you. So you're debating the universe when you want to debate these details. So that is where we have to go internal. That is where mama speaks to you in the hidden realm, the subconscious, beyond your conscious mind, beyond you figuring it out, beyond what you know. That's why we need our spiritual partner because he can look around those corners that we can't. Two, it's the one on that front line of the universe through your spiritual ancestors that are accessing that information from that cosmic realm or the soul realm or mama's domain. So the family, your family, your spiritual family, that is the ones that you know that have made their transition in this conscious reality. They're the ones on the front line as your spiritual entourage. 
you know, for you as their vessel for the family, your family, and giving you spiritual information and insights that are now, that they are able to access from the cosmic realm or the soul realm or mama's domain. And now we can channel that energy, the Gemini energy, channel that energy from all three of those realms, from the soul realm, the spirit realm to us as the physical vessels or the boots on the ground. Uh, we are the ones at ground level. We are the warriors at ground level as a vessel for the spiritual energy of our universal ancestors. That's how all three of those come together in harmony. You don't blend energy. You harmonize energy. So that is an important thing to, to remember. Energy unfolds through polarities, the balance of polarities, a negative and positive polarity. The pain, the physical half, the physical vessels of sacrifice and struggle through many lifetimes. We have been the vessels of sacrifice and struggle. And now this 1111 is giving us a completion of that half. Now it's time to activate the opposite reflection in equal measure, where we will now bring forward the universal, the spiritual aspect so that we can channel and manifest. That is how we get our powers. We step up to our ancestors, our spiritual ancestors, our soul ancestors. Which one of my ancestors have mastered in this creative power? Channel that energy to me so I can manifest it and materialize it at ground level. That is this operation that is being complete and fulfill. But if it's not whole, it's not real. <clears throat> it can be one iota outside of that complete 360 spiral, and it's not real. It's still in an aberrant rotation. So the, the love, the compassion, the feelings, the internal, how mama speaks to us from within, outside of what we think. What we think is where we dissect and restrict. I mean, a bird, your mind says, oh, a bird can fly. It eats worms. It chirps. It, you know, it looks like this. But when you go beyond the mind, now you're looking at a, a fairy. You're looking at something quite different when you look at something, the other half of that bird that goes beyond your mental contemplation of what that bird is. We can't stay in our left brain. Anybody who wants to stay in the left brain, you're not going to be able to participate in this operation. You're not going to be. It had its place. Those are the individual pieces that all had to come together to reflect this now collective royal universal purpose that is now ready to be balanced and be fulfilled. Two halves make a whole. You always fulfill through the opposite. So mama going internal and defining from within. Then that takes us to the earth element, the daughter component. This is where I continue to get arguments again <clears throat> because we can't come out of the programming mentally of Mother Earth, Mother Earth, there's four members identified through the four elements as the members of the royal family. We got Father Spirit, the Son of Power, Mama Universe, and we want to stick to Mother Earth, which is a piece of the puzzle that will not fit. It doesn't fit the holistic scenario. It's mama universe, daughter earth, the earth element. That is the last component to be come to the table because it's also internal and the earth deals with your values. It deals with your, um, your, your healing and the earth also deals with your character. 
Um, but the reason daughter earth is the last one to come to the table is because she is the manifesting aspect of this whole fulfillment of this purpose. She is the one who manifests. All souls come in through mama universe and are manifested and materialized through daughter earth. And that last earth sign, Capricorn, that is the ultimate earth, which deals, which indicates daughter earth. And I told you earlier, it's the sign of integrity and character. That means you have to be the highest vessel of integrity and character as daughter earth. That's why the mountain goat is her symbol, the highest peak. She sits at the 12 o'clock hand of the astrological cycle at the winter solstice, the peak. The last cycle we're in is going to peak at the winter solstice. That's where we get a, a completion. That is why this gateway is opening now through the 1111. So we can open up to the combination of these four aspects, these four royal members. Capricorn being the sign of character. And we're not just talking individual character, we're talking the character of what has been created in this process. She is the quality of the creative process. The princess, we have the prince with the cardinal fire, the sun, which is Aries. We have the queen, the cardinal water, the royal water, which is cancer energy. We have the king with the air element, the cardinal air, Libra, and the final cardinal sign, Capricorn. That would be the princess, the daughter. The reason the princess is the one most loved in the family, in the royal family, is because earth picks up through their sensitivity, which indicates the princess is the one most sensitive to the needs of the people of the kingdom. In the Cinderella story, which Capricorn represents Cinderella, that is why the princess is preaching at the prince. That is why Cinderella is constantly preaching at the prince. How dare you look down your nose at the people in your kingdom? They are your backbone. She, Cinderella represents Capricorn, where Leo represents the prince, the ego. And all the women are pushing up on the prince because he's the prince and he's bored with that. We're dealing symbolism when we're dealing with energy because there's a thousand concepts that can fall under one energy, one, one, <clears throat> excuse me, one symbol. So that is why there's a multitude of stories that, that indicate the meaning. That is why we have to look at the different levels. You'll, you will see a different face at a different level of that same line of energy. That is where all the debate comes in at because you're looking at another level from what someone else might be looking at. But what I'm trying to give you is the highest level. You can get no higher than those four elements. That represents those full four members of the royal family. And then ether we're talking about, the fifth element we're talking about is the ether that is the binding factor as all those components, those four components come together equally. No one higher or lower, more strategic or less strategic. It has to be a harmonization in balance. Balance is the key to everything in the universe. Balance, two halves make a whole. So when all four of these components come together in harmonization and equal balance, that is how we get the quality of the creative purpose that's been unfolding through a multitude of lifetimes. And it's anytime we go into the Aquarian age, 
which is the sign of evolution, that is when it's time to evolve to a new level of spiritual rulership, Leo, in the universe. So the earth component, the daughter component, the one who manifests and materializes the quality of how much harmony has occurred between the other three elements. And as all four of those components come together equally in harmony, each one having their own unique contribution to this holistic purpose. That is what God means, holistic, a full 360 degree spiral. That is how you open up a vortex and have access to the next level. So now is the time for those who hear me. Like I said, those who have ears, let them hear. Those who have eyes, let them see. You know, if you still have a problem with receiving, if it doesn't resonate with you, if you still feel like you know better what detail or work here, okay, then it's not resonating with you, then it's not meant for you. It's not your message. It's only for those who can resonate with this message. I'm getting this from a higher level. I am not figuring this out. Don't be <laughs> debating me. <laughs> Talk to my <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> so we are here now, you guys. Uh, and you can see, let's stop the details. <laughs> Let's stop nitpicking. Let's come together and understand mama's compassion and father's righteousness. That is the ultimate aim here. What is right? I don't care. I don't care if you're a Democrat, Republican, a, you know, a Christian, a Muslim, or I don't care whatever lines of division they've used to separate us, to divide and conquer. Only thing it's gonna come down to is what's right and what's wrong and what side you're going to be on. And if you're gonna operate in father's lessons of thinking righteously, if you're gonna operate in mama's lessons in your compassion and your love so that we can manifest the quality and the son is what focus when we put the son and the daughter, the fire and the earth together, the daughter is the one who gives the son, anytime we're dealing with the sun or the fire, we're dealing with focus. What's being focused on? What's being highlighted? What's being exposed? So exposing and focusing on character and integrity, the daughter component those two coming together at the winter solstice mm -hmm. because we have um we go from leo a new creative rulership being evolved through aquarius then we go to virgo the last sign in the physical half virgo is the last sign in the physical half so the virgin mama who cleanses and purifies the Leo son of false values through the matrix where you supersede the ego, Leo, and open the heart, also Leo, to the value of wisdom, Virgo. That is why Virgos are so meticulous when it comes to details. They can leave no stone unturned as they hunt out all impurities, earth is value. So hunting out all impurities and our values to the matrix in order to cleanse and purge of those false values, opposite sign of Virgo is Pisces, the subconscious. So cleansing the subconscious, giving us access to that ancient Akashic memory. When we cleanse and purge of the false values we've been programmed to believe is real in this physical illusion. 
Virgo is the one who will cleanse that Leo son of those false values. It's through Virgo where we unplug from the matrix. And once we unplug from the matrix by cleansing of false values to this material reality, because earth deals with material power versus going internal to your spiritual powers, can't serve two masters. So that is when we ascend above the horizon line into the spiritual half through Libra, where we can now each get into an equal and balanced partnership with our own spirit. We all do that through Libra. <clears throat> Libra is where everyone gets into partnership with their own spirit, come to their individual wholeness or individual Christhood. <clears throat> That is done through Libra. Libra is the sign of peace. And remember, you have all of this in you. All of it in you. Mm -hmm. It's the sign of peace. So that means once you have partnered with your spirit, once you have done your half and passed the baton to your spirit to do its half, you have to sit back at peace and secure. Because it's, if you're still down in the mouth, Worry, trying to figure it out. All you're saying to your spirit is, I don't trust you. And it won't be able to work for you. That's why you have to be at peace to receive your blessings. And once you bond in Libra with your spirit, once you come into partnership with your spirit through Libra, each one of us comes into partnership with our spirit before we can come to our individual wholeness. And only then do we access the next energy of Scorpio. Scorpio is the sign of bonding. We bond in Scorpio. Scorpio is the, bond, is the sign of intensity, where everything intensifies. So the bonding of the twin souls in Scorpio, the intense bonding of the twin souls in Scorpio is what activates the transformation. It is the sign of transformation, the death of the old for a rebirth of the new. The opposite sign is Taurus, the sign of values. So a transformation of values and habits. When we put those two halves together in balance, a transformation, the death of the old for a rebirth of the new. Like I said, we can't be Lot's wife. We can't be stepping up with old values and old habits as new rulers, new righteous rulers. So bonding through Scorpio activates the transformations, which the Mayans call the Great Crossover <laughs> or the Celestial Ship of the North. That is where we cross over what the Mayans call to the great creative place of Sagittarius. Asar, Sagittarius, Jupiter energy, the great beneficent, where we come to the abundance of our collective powers. And that is where, that's how this cycle is being completed. Yeah, when that, the ultimate son of power yeah. comes to his maximum power, uh, he becomes equal to the high priestess, mm -hmm. the princess, mm -hmm. Capricorn at the winter solstice. That's where the two become equal, the two halves, because Sagittarius will uh, dictate the Western half and Capricorn will dictate the Eastern half. So those two halves, the ultimate daughter of character and integrity and quality and the ultimate son of power, Sagittarius now becomes equal to the high priestess or the princess, which gives that ultimate balance between the yin and the yang. Excellent. The yin and the yang has to come together in balance in order to become whole, in order for this evolution, the fulfillment of this evolutionary process to be fulfilled. That is what this gateway, this 1111 gateway is signaling for us to make our crossover. And that is where the ether or the fifth element comes in as all of those components, all those four factors 
all come into harmony, into balance, and complete that ultimate 360 degree spiral in order for daughter Earth to evolve to mm -hmm. a new level in the universe and open up to the abundance of our collective power. We're here now, people. Oh, and yeah. right now, it's time for us to do our work. Oh, yeah. It's time for us. Today, we have three days after today mm -hmm. to activate these powers through this portal. Three days after today. Yeah, because it takes three. It, it, the, the waxing period is three days before. Mm -hmm. The peak is the day of, which is today. Mm -hmm. Then the waning is three days after. Okay. Okay. So, but now because we're on the after phase, mm -hmm. that means you can now use your energy mm -hmm. to remove mm -hmm. and to eliminate. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, we need to start doing these rituals either tonight and three mm -hmm. days after. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you what we need to be eliminating. All right. When it comes to the rituals, we need to do collectively because the next energy in a good couple of weeks is going to be Sagittarius, where those who have done their work will all come together in that abundance, that ether, that fifth element is going to be activated through those who have went through this portal and done their ritual to eliminate what we've all been guided to step up and do at this time. As you look into the world and what's going on in the world right now, it's time to eliminate the abuse of power. Yes. That is the... the factor on all levels that have polluted everything is the abuse of power. Everything you're seeing happening right now has to do with an abuse of power. And the more the innocent, the victim, the more egregious the sin. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing a um, culmination. Mm -hmm of an abuse of power. But I'm going to tell you what you're seeing, mm -hmm. what you've been exposed to and what you're seeing, mm -hmm. just the tip of the iceberg. Wow. There's more abuse going on than what you're actually seeing. Yeah. And now we're talking about people of melanation because what you think may be happening that's being exposed to the conscious realm was still being hidden. You know, we got to look at Hades. We got to look at the Congo. There's more egregious things going on there mm. than what you're seeing, mm. what they're showing you. Right. There, that's another, I'm not saying it's not real. I'm not saying because there's all levels of abuse of power, mm. but it's being used as a distraction mm. for you to see the ultimate abuse of power. And that's going to deal with our family, mm -hmm. our melanated family. Everyone wants to ignore because it's been going on a long time with what's been going on in Hades and what's going on in the Congo right now. It's even more egregious than what they're showing you. Mm -hmm. It's what I want you to understand. And, and that's why it's time for us to step up. You know, we see, um, how can I, uh, we see other nations stepping up for what we're seeing, but we are the hidden people. And it's time for us to step up from a hidden perspective for defending our family. Mm -hmm. Myra, we need to start this now. Yes. Myra, is there any ritual in particular that you would want the family, maybe collective tonight, 
in our own separate space <clears throat> to in, engage in, Sister Myra? As I will go back to my mentor, Bobby Hammett. Mm -hmm. He said, the best rituals are the ones you create yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is why we each, that's why the 11, 11. Right. Okay. Right. Your personal mastery. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. each one of us has a, a unique contribution or purpose mm -hmm. in contribution. Your spirit should have already identified to you where your magic, your powers your your most powerful how you're most powerful so everybody has a unique purpose you know it's like um it's like the wave at a football game you know everybody has to step up when it's their time to make the contribution to complete that circle or that spiral so there's always you know it, it's the one and all in the all in one no one's reality is no more wrong or right than anyone else's Everybody has their own unique purpose to bring to the table and contribution to the whole. Right. And you know, I've done on your show a multitude of times, the hand, <laughs> the little finger, ring finger, middle finger, index, thumb, palm, back of the hands, the fingernails. These are all unique components that comes together to make a hand mm -hmm. that works in harmony for us to do what we need to do. Everybody has a unique purpose. Mm -hmm. No one uh, reality is no more wrong or right than anyone else's. Indeed. We've all been instructed through our spirit, through many lifetimes in the purpose we came here to master and make that contribution to. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, I'll give you some fundamentals. Um, you always have to you, use a circle. Mm -hmm. You have to have a circle of protection. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're ready to start your invocation, you're going to in invoke the spirits of the universe to come. You know, we rule the spirits, not the other way around. Ooh, there you go. You can say that again. So we yes, said we, we rule the spirits. But you got to know that. Yeah. yeah. That's they'll run ripshot over you if you don't know your power. Watch the movie 13 Ghost. It'll give you a hint of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Spirit has to respond to written and spoken incantation. Right. Facts. So you, each one of us has already been trained by our spirit where mm -hmm. our mastery is at. Mm -hmm. And each one of us has to make our contribution to that. I always say it's like the twinkling of a star. Mm -hmm. And you're only responsible for one twinkle, mm -hmm. not the full twinkling. But the one twinkle is just as important as the full twinkling, right. because if you're not in position to make your contribution, when it's your time to shine, the star is not complete, it's not whole. If it's not whole, it's not real. Okay? So everybody has a unique purpose of mastery. They've been doing this through many lifetimes, guided by their spirit to master in the purpose. Whatever sun sign you came in in this lifetime, mm -hmm is what you came in to expose in that mastery mm -hmm. of what your contribution is mm -hmm. to this holistic purpose being right. fulfilled. Indeed. So everybody has a unique purpose <clears throat> and contribution to the fulfillment of this. So yep. uh, use a circle for your invocation. Mm -hmm. um, the four elements, okay? Mm -hmm. That's how you activate the ether. Mm -hmm. which is going to be on your altar, mm -hmm. which is going to be the candles for the fire, mm -hmm. you, maybe some incense for the air, mm -hmm. bowls of water for the water, mm -hmm. and crystals or stones or plants for the earth. Mm -hmm. Okay? Those should be the, 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 the symbols of those four elements on your altar, mm -hmm. you see. Um, and um, then... Um, Trust what you feel. Once Indeed. you do your circle and you know, let your spirit you see, you gotta get in partnership with your spirit. We gotta, we gotta we keep forgetting we have a partner. I, I got my circle behind me, my, <laughs> I, got my I got my circle. You always are symbolizing. Yeah, I, I was telling you, yeah. brother Rich, you always my... bring a symbolism to the table here. Oh yeah. So oh, everybody yeah. does have a unique purpose. Uh, these are some of the things. One of the things, okay, you create your circle and demonstrate it through the four elements. I usually put four candles. You know, I'll put 
you know, like the East, we're dealing with the fire. Uh, the West, we're dealing with the air. Uh, the North, uh, we're dealing with the water. And the South, we're dealing with the earth. So I will put the candles in those four directions to form my circle, you see. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, and then, um, you know, you evoke the spirits. And the thing is, is that um, your spirit, you know, in other words, it'll take a life on its own at that point. You just have to stay true and trust right. to do what you feel. Sometimes I'll hop. Sometimes I'll go down to the floor. You do what you're inspired to do at that inspired. point. Inspired, yes, yes. Yes, okay? Love it, I'm and loving then, it. Yeah, and then, um, and then put it out there, what it is. And I talk to each individual four members. Uh -huh. and, for, and, and, and what they have to contribute, like the air is right. righteousness, justice, you see, balance. Uh, the fire is passion to protect, to defend. It's the warrior, it's the protector energy. We are, the, the reason we're the gods is because we bring all those elements together. We're the, the, we're the vessel that can bring those four components together for wholeness. That's what God means, holistic. Mm. So we are the vessels that can bring those four components together. Uh, the water uh, is the love, the compassion, but it's also uh, the, um, what can I say? Uh, no compromise. <laughs> Your mama don't play. She like homie the clown. You got to... You know, she said to me as her daughter, you will represent me as I would be represented. Woo! And that is no mealy mouth walking on eggshell type of bullshit. That's how she said it to me. Woo! Woo! I do not kowtow the ego. Okay. So <laughs> that is mama's, you know, your compassion for her family. That is who she's focused on, her ancient, universal, melanated family. Are you one of hers or not? You've been ordained by Big Mama. There's nothing to fear, but if you fear anything more than her. Because she does not play, okay? And I had a debate on one of the comments the last time. Somebody was trying to tell me, it's the father, okay? Well, no, the father is the air element. He deals with compromise. And I got this from... Bobby Hammett, you know, as well. The father is the one who negotiates the air element. Let's come to an agreement. Let's, um, you know, uh, negotiate. Uh, can't we all just get along? That's the air element. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. We need that half. Mama's just the opposite of that. Right, right, right. <laughs> she ain't compromising. Indeed. If she's sits that you're about to mess up her family, she will F you up first and ask questions later. That's Kali Ma. That's why Kali Ma is cancer energy, the water. Right. The most rich, ferocious and vicious mama. Okay? Father will negotiate, but that's his role. No problem. It's not about trying to debate who's better or who has this. Or We all have individual qualities. And that's what you got to understand about these four aspects as to who to step up to for the different quality you're trying to activate, you see. Indeed. So the fire is your passion, your desire to protect and defend righteousness. As you look at Aries and Libra, Aries the warrior, Libra the peacemaker, separate them aries kicking butt all over town libra with no backbone put them together a warrior for justice taking a stand for peace taking mm -hmm. a stand for righteousness when you balance those two you mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. so and then the earth is value character integrity internal so it starts from within your own self-worth that is what they've undermined in this uh, illusionary conscious realm is your own self value and self value of uh, self worth from within. Right. Earth and water are internal. <clears throat> water is your emotional happiness. Your earth is your security. Mm -hmm. Those are too big. Of, those are internal. Those are too big of a burden to put on anyone's shoulders outside of you. Mm -hmm. That's why I say spirit moves inside out. When you're secure, 
the earth and the value earth of what you feel the water how mama speaks to you internal through the water from your ancient memory from your ancestral memory memory from your ancestral powers mama is the one who exposes from the internal who you are from a universal perspective and connects you to your ancestral powers so when you're secure as to how mama speaks to you through how you feel from your ancient memory the security the earth is how you send that energy vibration out external Mm. And it will reflect itself as air and fire or spiritual power. So to the magnitude of your security of trusting what you feel, like I read in the beginning, is how you open up that magic, how you send that vibration out external, and it will reflect as air and fire um, your spiritual power. Mm -hmm. Got it. You are the one who dictates. Got who you are. got two quick questions for you, Murray, before we get out of here. Okay. Uh, this show is absolutely f- phenomenal. You got more of a fire presence to you tonight, Myra. Like yeah, you, you, you know, be calm. You, you got you got some fire energy to you. I, I asked Spirit before this happened. I know this is a very strategic time. This message, right. I really wanted to do it justice, so I asked for help from All the, the universe. Help. All the elders, all the elders are stressing to us how strategic and important these times is, and I'm yes. just hoping that everybody understands that y'all not joking when y'all say how strategic and important these times are right now. Yes, yes. Uh, l- let me let me ask you this, Sister Myra. Yes. Since we're in the last cycle of the e- of energy, is there any energy? Uh, you know, we're talking about these elements. Is there any element that is more dominant in this last cycle that we're in right now? Water, air, fire, earth. Is there any element that's more dominant in this last cycle right well, now? Well, it's the subject of our presentation here. The that ether. is where the ether, the ether. Yeah. <laughs> remember we talked about five elements. Yeah, yeah. Whenever we put the, the other four uh-huh. in balance and in harmony, that is how it's going to activate the fifth gotcha. element. Gotcha. Or so, uh, the ether. And that, yes, is the most dominant that's mm. the magical process of it all. Ooh. See? Ooh. So, and and yeah. and and also, Myra, you talked about, um, and even in previous videos, you talked about mastering the elements and how the energies work through the elements. I'm just curious. In order to, like, let's say, uh, Master, you talked about water being emotions, and we all know that the media manipulates our emotions wow. constantly. I was just curious in terms of black people, do you think, just use the black people as an example, what we call black people as an example. Do you think one way to master the element of water in our emotions is to be, is to learn how to swim better? And I ask that because black people are notorious for not getting in the water, surfing, uh, you know, going to the ocean, going to the beach continuously. So do you think if we had a better relationship with water, that would equate to a better relationship with our oh, emotions. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, air and fire works best together, and yeah. earth and water works best together. Right, okay. Right, right, right. So, yes. Um, and matter of fact, what I read in the beginning, how we've been programmed in false values. So, mm-hmm. who've been putting that out there? Oh, black people don't want to swim. Yeah. Come on. Who the programmed me- us to believe that? The media. And because we believe yeah. it, you know, we bring it into fruition. We manifested it. Yeah. yeah, we are water people. Yes, yeah, our ancestors. That water, you know, that comes back to mama. Right. Uh, full circle. Right. Everything started matriarchal. The water element, the melanin component, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and now it's come back. You know, like I said, everything started matriarchal, then it spiraled around to the patriarchal half, and anytime mm-hmm. we go into the Aquarius age. Mm -hmm. is when it's come back full circle to mama again Mm -hmm. so yes mama but uh, and she is the one like i said mama and daughter Mm -hmm. are the water and the earth are the Mm -hmm. final components to balance what we've done externally through the air and the fire or the father and the son now it's time to bring the mama and the daughter but the mama the internal is the one who gives us what we need to feel from our ancient memory so we can manifest the daughter 
or materialize in the security of what mama is given us, we now have the security to manifest uh, that into the physical level of reality. This is how mama, yes, mama is the, you know, the biggest component when it comes to this ether process, mm. because um, that is, she's too omniscient as mama mm. universe to mm -hmm. come down here and take care of her family at ground level. Mm -hmm. That is why she sent us in as her vessel you see, at ground, just like they say the father sent his only begotten son, mama sent her vessels in mm. at mm. ground level because she's too omniscient as mama universe to take care of her family at the physical level. So that is why she sent her vessels in who can channel that energy, Ooh. then manifest it and materialize it at the physical Ooh. level. We are the boots on the ground for mama's energy. And between is the spiritual, the father, mama, the universe, the soul mm. realm, father, mm. the spiritual realm, and mm. then us, the physical vessels for that energy to channel it, manifest it in the quality. We aren't going to be able to do the quality of manifestation until this all becomes whole or holistic. Mm. Wow. And this gateway today, 11-11, yeah. mm -hmm. is what gives us the portal to make that crossover from the masculine half to the feminine half, only to bring those two into equal balance in order to become whole. Father spirit in balance with mama's soul in order to become whole or holistic. Mama's no good without father. Father's no good without mama. This is the creative process. Father spirit and mama's soul coming into balance to become whole or holistic, which completes a 360 degree spiral, 180 degrees on each half is how you open up a vortex. Right. To access mm. the energy vibrations. And you're doing this through a multitude of levels. Individual level first, you're balanced with your own spirit. Then you have a couple level, family level, goes to a community level, local, national, international, global, then planetary, universal, and star system level. Those are all the levels we have access to, to balance. The star system level is where our ancient energy uh, ancestors are occupying. A uh, serious star system. Indeed. So hey. balancing star system is, is, the, is, the, is the full range from the individual vessel all mm. the way up that line of energy to the highest vibration of a star system level indeed that is how the levels we have access of ascension to channel as high as we can take it is as high as we can bring it back full spiral um myra what's your i want to leave your cash app before we get out of here what's your um cash app again myra uh your dollar sign uh -huh. Myra Moss, M Y R A M O S S, the numbers 813. Mm -hmm. gotcha. So, Myra Moss, 813. All right. I, um, I'm sharing Myra's Cash App for those who want to support uh, this, this magnificent elder we have in our community. I mean, what a show tonight, y'all. I mean, this was a. Oh, and you know Ooh. what? It'll, it'll come up as Myra Moss, but uh -huh. you know, M O S D. Yeah. Me typing it in, but it is the right the right one. If it comes up Myra Moss, don't let that throw you. That's still the the correct account. Okay. In, indeed, indeed. Okay. So li listen, y'all. We got the assignment. Uh, we got three yeah. days for this portal. Let's make it happen. Um, let's tap in and let's become more at peace with these elements. Um, yeah, this is. I mean, amazing show, Myra. You, Wonderful. You, you did it again. You did it again. <laughs> Well, um, I did ask for help because I knew how yeah. strategic this was at this time. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm serious, you guys. Let's step up. Let's do. Let's prove. Let's show, you know, mm -hmm. because, you know, this portal is giving us the opportunity uh, to prove, you know, th these powers that we are the ones in control. We are the ones that has the highest powers. And what we don't, if we don't like what we're seeing on this, this earth right now, we got to know simultaneous. At the same rate, we see this reality falling 
is the same rate we're rising spiritually. We got to know that, okay? Same rate you see this falling is the same rate we're rising in spiritual. You have to know that. And now you have the opportunity as a gateway has opened through that 1111 in wherever you've mastered personally through many lifetimes to step up to that mastery and contribution to the spiritual mastery being fulfilled through the number 22. So we are the 11s, you know, bringing those 11s together to reflect that 22 spiritual fulfillment in the mastery of us as individual vessels. Now stepping through that portal and that gateway and changing the scenario, what's going down, it's become crucial. Oh yeah. And whatever you see that is going on, that they're showing you and how ugly it is, because it, it is ugly. What they're showing you is ugly. Know that for us melanin people, it's even uglier they're not showing us that. But start looking at what they're doing to Hades and look at what they're doing in the Congos. And they've been doing it for a, a minute now. And it's all and it's the same culprit that's doing it to uh, to who they're showing you. Mm. Hey, uh leave them your website, uh Sister Myra, because I know you uh, are... it's Sister Myra, you know, sistermyra.com. Um, in order to sign up, you know, for the consultation. I think I'm somewhere out to June, which isn't as bad as it used to be a year. So I think I'm out to June somewhere as far as getting a consultation. Um, yeah. But um, just systemhour.com. Indeed. Yeah. So, so with that being said, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Had a pack house tonight. Uh, we are not going to get to any more questions tonight. We'll work something out where we'll do a QA and uh, a before the year's out. We'll do a nice Q&A with Sister Myra on the show. So, um, But I want to thank everybody. We had, we had about almost 3,000 3, people in the room tonight. Wonderful. Oh, amazing, amazing time. You got me hype. I'm so hyped right now, Sister Myra. So, I hope hey. we got a lot of family hype. You know? in, indeed. Yes. No, for real, for real, for real. It's time, yeah. family. It's time, family. It's time. Yeah. We've talked to talk. Now it's time to walk the walk. This is time. You know, we got to help our brothers and sisters. We got to help our family. You know, we got to help anywhere that there's been an abuse of power going on. And that's going on at all levels. That's what you got to focus on. Eliminating an abuse of power. You don't got to define it. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to, you know, figure out who or what. Just eliminate anywhere at any level there's an abuse of power going on and you're doing your work and you're doing your job. Family, we out of here. See you next time. Peace. Thank you, Myra. Love you, family. Bye-bye. Peace.